make a pattern for the top, I'm using the duct tape method. What you want to do first is make sure you're wearing the correct underwear to get you that shape. So I made sure I had the correct bra on to give me like that shape that I wanted. Pay attention to what top you're wearing too, I decided to use a bodysuit. You also might want to wear loose fitting trousers for this because the armour does go quite low. I also liked this top that I chose because it's not so tight in the middle here and it gives me the look that I wanted for the armour. I didn't want it to come right in like this, I wanted it to be sticking out a little bit from the body. So the first thing you want to do with the duct tape method is protect your body. And what you can do is you can just wrap cling film around. You might need somebody to help you for this, I used my husband. Especially when you get to the patterning stage when you're drawing on all the seams, you maybe need somebody to help you with the back because obviously it's not going to be very easy to draw on the back. When you're wrapping the cling film around, don't pull it too tight, you want it to just sit sort of on the body. If you do it too tight, it might end up being slightly smaller than what you are. Once the cling film is on, we start with the duct tape. When I start, I like to put a big bit around my waist. It's because I like things really fitted at the waist, so I always want that area to be quite taut. Then I think the best thing is to do is to cut smaller strips. They seem to go on a lot better this way. And you can lay them in a way so that it kind of forms to the curves of your body. Just watch this bit in the middle here. I do it in a sort of V shape. You can see I'm putting some vertically, some horizontally. I'm basically laying them in a way that will follow the curve of the body. I much prefer using my own patterns because I am quite curvy. I've got a big hip to waist ratio. So a lot of standard sizes don't really fit me as well, I sometimes have to tailor those. So once you get to the back section you will have to get somebody to help you unless you've got some sort of superpower where you can put <laughs> tape on your back. If you find this middle part isn't going in enough, you can use another bit of tape to scrunch it together slightly and change the shape. Once the tape is all on, we can now draw the shape of the top and where the seams are. Bear in mind this will be made out of foam. So the way I would start an armour like this is I would draw a line directly down the centre. And then we draw little notches along th that line and what that does is it gives us a reference point. So when I cut through this line here as a seam, it means it'll join correctly to the seam next to it. The next thing I do is I draw a seam directly under where my chest is. That's because there's an immediate difference in curvature here, so I would treat that top part separately from the bottom. Next, I would look at a side seam, and it just basically goes directly down the side, just under where your arm is. I get my husband to help me with this part as well, just because it is a bit tricky. Once that seam is drawn, then you can add your reference points, so that when you cut it apart, you can match those together quite easily. Because this is quite a large section at the bottom here, I add another seam halfway between the middle and the seam at the side. You basically want to design your pattern so that when you cut it out and lay it flat, it doesn't have any bumps sticking up, so you want it to lay as flat as possible. So you are better adding in extra seams if there's a big section, curving like that. To pattern the top of this armour, I actually used a bra that I already had, it's the one that I would wear with the armour. And I looked at the seams on the bra and I just copied them on my top. Because if you've got something that fits you well like that and it's a similar shape, then why wouldn't you use the same seams? If you've got underwear that really fits you well and you might be wearing it with the armour, I would use that as your pattern. So now I can just sketch on where I've put those little reference points from the, the bra and I can draw that on and make my pattern. I start with the very top of the armour, then I add in a curved line underneath and then I can draw the vertical middle line down. Once I'm happy with that shape, I can then add in a top part of this armour. I actually go back and redesign this later, so that top line actually is a lot lower on my new design. I get my husband to draw the seams down the back, so we'll have a middle line straight down the back with the reference points, and then I've got another one that kind of curves round. I take it from the bottom of the armhole down to sort of halfway between the side seam and the back seam. You now want to cut the duct tape off. You obviously don't want to cut your garment underneath, so just make sure you pull it out while you're cutting it or you're going to end up with a big hole through your t-shirt or your bodysuit. I cut directly up through the middle seam at the front, then it looks a bit like a vest and you can just take it off then. Next, I just cut through every single seam. As a side note as well, the top actually has a different shape at the bottom to what I'm cutting out. I just wanted like a base pattern that I can use for lots of different projects. So that's why I haven't added in those kind of cut out parts at the bottom. Because we don't need a lot of the waist here. I actually change a lot of that. 
I've obviously split it into the front part and the back part. What I would do at this point is put an F for front and a B for back and that means I know which is which. Then obviously you want to label each individual section and if you take a photo once you label these then when you go to put them back together with your foam you've got your letter in you can refer to your photo that you had before and you know exactly where that lettering goes on the pattern. Sometimes in these curved parts when you try to lay them flat they might not lay flat right away so what you can do is cut in a dart. This will make your pattern more accurate. What you want to do is you can transfer your pattern to paper. I actually use butcher paper. This means I can neaten up the pattern and it'll be a lot easier to transfer the pattern to foam. Make sure you've cut out the reference points from your pattern as small triangles. Next you might want to arrange all your pattern pieces out so that you're using the least amount of paper possible. You could do that or you could just do one at a time. To start I'm taking a pencil. I will be going over it in pen but I want to use a pencil in case I need to fix anything. All I'm doing at this stage is just drawing around the duct tape pattern. Just make sure it doesn't slide around, I just put some pressure on it with my hand and just keep making sure that it's not slid out of place. To define the pattern, I'm going to use a steel rule as well as a flexible ruler. If you get a ruler like this, it just means you can do really clean curved lines. You can bend the ruler to exactly kind of the shape that you want and then go over it with your sharpie. Also you want to go over the little notches that you're cutting out, these are the reference points. Sometimes it's hard to tell with your pattern if it's a straight line or not so I just double check with a rule and then if there is a straight part I take the rule and I draw it on with my pen. You can see that this line here actually goes into a curve, I actually correct that later so the pattern that I'm selling is actually slightly different from this. So then I continue going around the rest of the pattern with the steel rule and with the bendy ruler. Remembering to add in the reference points and then obviously when you're done you want to also label that so I put a little F for front and then the circled one is the letter that identifies which part of the armour this is. Once I'm finished with one part I then move on to the next part and I'm just going to do that in exactly the same way. If there's a curve I use the sort of quilters ruler that bends, if there's a straight line I use my steel rule and again just remember to label it. I can then continue this process through all of the armour. Now we're only going to pattern each section once because when you do the mirrored side of the top you can actually just turn the pattern around and that will give you the reverse part of that section. Here we have all the pattern pieces. Once I've finished drawing all the pattern I take an X-Acto knife and I start to cut the pattern. X-Acto knives are ideal for thin materials like this. I find it gives the most accurate cut as you have better control. It's a good idea for each section of the pattern to actually cut them away from the paper and then it gives you much freedom to be able to turn that piece of paper around to cut it. Then after I've cut the piece out I want to take out all the reference points so I just use the knife again to cut out those little triangles. So I continue this process for all the other sections. And here we have all our patterned armour parts ready. Obviously this looks like we've jumped a step but this is really just to show you that I made a mock-up of the top out of scraps. And then what I did was I cut up where I think that the bottom should be so this helped me with my pattern. So I take my amended pattern and then transfer this to 5mm foam. I start with pattern piece A and I use silk pins to secure it to the foam while I draw around it with a metallic pen. Remember to draw in where all the reference points are when you do this. Then what to do is take your pattern off and then label it the same as what the pattern says on the front. I'm going to repeat this for the left hand side so I turn the pattern over so I get the reverse. So now we've got a right and a left side for part A. And then I continue doing this for all of the pattern pieces for the under armour. When finished you'll have something that looks like this and now we can move on to the cutting stage. To cut the foam I'm using a box cutter knife. The main thing before cutting is to make sure that it's sharp. The sharpness of the blade will really affect the cuts that you make. It should glide through the foam like this. You can see I'm controlling the knife and I'm trying to cut in one steady go. This is what will give you the cleanest cut. I'm also cutting at 90 degrees so make sure your knife is straight when you're doing this. So once you've finished the first pattern piece you can continue cutting out the other ones. 
Once you've got your pattern pieces, you then want to divide it into parts one and parts two. One being the right hand side and two being the left hand side. I take the heat gun and heat the pieces first. It means I can bend them into shape so that they'll be easier to glue. After that, I then apply contact cement along the areas to get glued. And I spread the glue with a scrap piece of foam. Because the glue takes a while to set, I also take pieces C and D and apply the glue to those also. Once the glue is set, I then glued part A to part B. When you're gluing, the main thing you need to do is make sure that your reference points match up. Now I attach C to D, then I use the reference points to line this up with part B. And then this is what we have. I repeat this for the other side. So now I've got two halves. I take parts E and F and I add glue to all the surfaces that need glued. I also apply glue to the bottom of the chest piece. Making sure that the registration marks line up, I then glue it all together and this is what I have. Now I'm gluing the back, so I take parts G and H and I apply glue to the sides. I apply glue to the edge of E as well. Once ready, I glue these parts together. And to make the process easier, I use a heat gun. Now we've got one half and we can do the other side. This pattern might look slightly different, I did change it again. So don't worry if yours is slightly different than this. They're very minimal changes. So next I then glue the two halves together and this is what I'm left with. I also never added straps at the top because I found they were too bulky. So I ended up replacing these with nylon straps, which I'll show you how to do later. To make the detail for the Under Armour, I cut the detail templates on my Cricut. It's a machine that takes your design and cuts it for you. This gives really clean lines, which I felt were important for this project. You can hand cut these if you wish. If you're machine cutting, then to start, get your foam, tape it down to a Cricut mat with painter's tape. This stops the foam moving about on the mat. Select your materials on Design Space and then feed it into the machine. Click See when ready. The machine will then cut out your design. To start the detail, I've cut out detail part UA1. There is one step you'll have to do beforehand before you glue this though, and that is dremeling the edges. I've marked with a silver pen where I'm going to dremel. This is because I don't want to get them muddled up and accidentally dremel the underneath or dremel the wrong side. I take my dremel with the sanding drum on it and I dremel the edges to make them slightly more curved or beveled. I use the foam pieces to mark out where I'm going to glue. Next, I take my contact cement. I spread the glue over the whole of the area that I'm gluing. I do the exact same with the foam piece to get glued. I wait until they're not so tacky and then attach the two together. When I'm gluing these middle pieces, I'm also making sure that they're going flush against the seam line in the middle. Doing this means that everything's straight and where they should be and everything else that will get glued will be in the correct place. Just as a side note, keeping your contact cement in a squeegee bottle means that you're opening up the tin less and therefore it's less likely to get all gloopy real fast. As always, just a reminder, when you're gluing to not put too much glue on, you'd want a really thin layer. So for these side pieces for the front, I do the exact same. I'm going to dremel along the edges that connects them together. And I'm leaving little marks with my silver pen just to remind me where I'm dremeling. Because the foam is thin, they're not the easiest thing to dremel, so do take your time on this. Next, we're going to glue these pieces on in the same way as before. I'm obviously using scrap pieces of foam to spread this. What I would recommend is getting a fresh piece each time because if there's dried glue on there, it picks up some of the glue and makes it harder to spread evenly. When I'm gluing, I'm just making sure that this edge here is flush against the other edge. Same goes for this corner part, it should sit flush. So the next foam pieces straight off the Cricut are UA2 and UA3. What I do is I apply glue along the bottom here and glue on UA2 to the side. When gluing it, just make sure it's flush against UA1. Once that's happily glued down, I then apply glue along the top of UA2 and I'm going to glue UA3 on top of that. And it should also be flush with the bottom of the top. 
Next, we're taking foam piece UA4 straight off the Cricut and we're going to glue that just under the chest here, making sure it's flush with UA1. Also, as a side note, if there's any edges sticking up like this, just dremel them down. You don't want big bumps underneath because there is detail going over the top of this. So once that is down, we're taking UA5 and we're gluing it over the top of UA4, but it'll also go over UA1 slightly as well. It should sit happily in the corner like this. And then what I do is I mark out where it stops so I know where to put the glue. So I spread the glue on the foam piece, spread the glue on the top where it is to get glued and then glue that down. When gluing tricky foam pieces, it's a good idea to use baking paper as a barrier between the two parts. This stops them accidentally gluing in the wrong place and helps you to guide them. So when we're at this stage, this is what the top should look like. To create a gluing guide for the next foam parts, I cut out UA21 out of cart. This means that when I glue them on, they'll be in exactly the right place. So what I've done here is I've taken the template and I've drawn on where everything's to get glued. We need to glue detail on top of this, but there's obviously grooves now where we've dremeled. So to create a supportive platform to stop the foam dripping, we can use foam clay and some water to help it stick. And what I do is I just squish it into all these little grooves. I take UA6 and UA7. These get glued on top of UA5. UA6 gets put on first like this. Make sure it's flush with the bottom. Then on top of that, we add some glue, spread it, and UA7 goes on top of that. At this point, I leave the foam clay for a day to set. The next day, I take some sandpaper and sand it to make sure it's flat. Next, I take template pieces UA8, UA9 and UA10. It's a good idea before getting started to find the centre line on these pieces. This will ensure that everything lines up properly. To get the centre line, just measure across at different points and mark out where the centre is and join the dots. Before gluing down UA8, I take a Dremel and bevel all the edges. The aim here is to give it a nice curved edge. For some of the areas that are hard to get to, I use sandpaper. Next, I'm going to glue that down. So I apply glue to the base and apply glue to the piece that's to get glued. Then when it's time to glue, I can join them together. Again, I'm using the baking paper just to make sure that I don't make any mistakes and glue things where they shouldn't be glued. Because these are at an angle, you just want to make sure that they line up with the stencil that you've got underneath. This will ensure that both sides are even. Next, we're taking UA9 and we're gluing that above UA8. Then, as you can see, UA10 goes on top of that. We've got our center lines, we add our glue and then we glue these together. You can see that UA10 is slightly smaller than UA9, so you just see a little bit of UA9 poking through at the sides. Next, we're taking UA11 and gluing it on top of that. This part has three pieces to it. What I do is I line it up with the top and that will give me a reference of where to glue. Ensuring that I line up the middle, I can then glue that down. Then we've got these little details to do, so what I do is I sand around where they need to go as I want another bevel. You can obviously dremel it before you glue it down if you want, and you can also dremel these small parts so that you get a nice bevel on both sides. Next, we're taking UA12, 13 and 14. Dremel the edges of these to get a nice curved edge. Once these are done, I then glue them on. Next, we're going to take UA15, 16 and 17, dremel those edges and glue them up top of the pieces we've just glued. Again, just ensure that these are in the middle when you're gluing. Sometimes I use a steel rule just to guide it into place. When we're finished at this stage, this is what it should look like. After looking back at reference photos, I decided to add some extra parts to the design. Here we have UA18. So what I did was I designed an extra piece to go underneath as a support. I call this UA19. Once that was glued, put some glue on the top, put the glue on the very thin foam part and then glue these together. And what I do is I glue it on the very edge of UA3. The next part I decided to add is UA20. This goes on top of UA5. I glue this so there's about five millimeters sticking out of the bottom of UA5 that you can still see. 
Just take care when you're lining this up. It should look like what you see here. So now all the under armour detail has been added, but it's likely you will need to remove material from the bottom in a curved shape. What I would suggest is to make your belt first and curve this bottom part accordingly with a box cutter knife. As a closure for the back, I'm using zips. In the tutorial for the main top, I go over this completely, so please refer to that for this stage. I actually added the zips to both of these at the same time. Another thing I'd changed that I need to go over is these nylon straps. What I did was I cut the nylon straps to size and I made them quite long so it went quite far down at the front and at the back to give a really secure connection. At the back here, what I did was draw around where they were to get glued, added some scores with a box cutter knife, added hot glue and pressed them on. For the velcro that's attached to the base top, all I did was draw around to where I wanted to put them, add the scores, add the hot glue and press them on. For the strap, it's a different story because we're attaching to fabric. So I actually attached these with a box stitch. I filmed this separately to show you exactly how to do that. So for doing a box stitch, do a lock stitch at the start, then sew straight forward down one side. With the needle inside the fabric, turn the part round and then you're sewn diagonally across one side. With the needle down, turn it again and you're sewn across the top. Needle down, sew the other diagonal. Turn it around and you're going to go forward and back on this bottom part. Then you're going to finish the stitch by going straight and doing a lock stitch at the end. I did this technique for every single piece of velcro on my costume. It's a fantastic stitch and really resists pulling from any direction. Now you've finished your Under Armour top and you can move on to the main top tutorial.